Hello everyone. I went to Norfolk for a few days and uh, we found this little shop little bric-a-brac junk shop it used to be called and there was a box full of coins now most of them were in that condition and they were a pound each so i bought this one 1868 even though it's pretty bad they are it's a harder date to come by so i thought i'll have that and this one was in there as well so i said to the guy yep yeah, i'll take those two please and he looked at me and said sorry i can't let you have that one for a pound that should not have been in the box i thought oh, fair enough so I said, um, um, how much do you want for that? And he said, oh, five pounds. So I snapped his hand off at that one. In fact, if it said 25, I would have still bought it. Look at that. Let's have a closer look. As you can see, it's an 1874 Victorian penny. Now, there's a few different varieties for the 1874. Some have got an H mint mark for Heaton, and this one hasn't. You can see this is a plain one. This would have been minted in London, Tower Hill in London. Let's put it down there, see it a bit clearer without me holding it and shaking it about. Let's look at the obverse first. There are three different obverses you can get for an 1874 London minted penny, and they are obverse 6, 7 and 8. I get my references from this book here, The Bronze Coinage of Great Britain by Michael J. Freeman. Absolutely crucial if you're a serious coin collector, and I paid... £14 for that about five years ago. I got it from Amazon. Now if we go back to my coin, here it is. I can see straight away that it must be an obverse 6. Because if we zoom into the brooch, the rose brooch on Victoria's dress, you can see all of it. Now if we go and have a look at obverse 7 and obverse 8, only a small part is showing. So that's the main difference. Another thing I look for is the colon after the letter G at the top of the coin. Now the bottom dot of the colon is almost touching Victoria's head, and that's on of verse 6. But if we look at of verse 7 and of verse 8, we see there's a clear gap. Now let's go back to my coin, and we can see the colon is almost touching Victoria's head. So I'm 100% convinced now that this one is an of verse 6. Okay, apart from the brooch, let's have a look at some other differences. Uh, of verse 7 was known as the aged head. They tried to make Victoria a little bit older looking. She was in her mid fifties by 1874. So they made the face a little bit fatter and the neck obviously thicker. You can see those differences. But between obverse seven and obverse eight, oh, it's very subtle indeed. I think they've even made her look younger again. Maybe Victoria didn't like this portrait. Uh, main differences here that I look for the nose here in obverse 7 is a little bit pointy, and this here between the nose and the mouth is a bit straight. But if we go over to obverse 8, the nose has been rounded off, and this here, almost like a curved area. Uh, the ribbons is another thing to look for. The ribbons are thinner in 7 and quite a bit thicker in obverse 8. So it's pretty definite, I've got an obverse 6, but what about the reverse? Let's see how many possibilities we've got there. So let's go back to Freeman's. I know I've got an obverse 6. We can rule out the ones with the H below the date because we know it's not a heat and mint mark. So that gives us two options, reverse G or reverse H. And there they are. Now if you did have the H mint mark, it would be right at the bottom below the date between the 8 and the 7. Now these images are from uncirculated coins, just so you get a really good view of the designs. And while we're talking about designs, the designer of both the obverse and the reverse on these pennies was Leonard Charles Wyan. He was born in the grounds of the Royal Mint. I don't mean he was born on the lawn or anything like that. There were houses in the grounds of the Royal Mint, and his father, William Wyan, was also a Royal Mint engraver. Okay, let's have a look at some differences between reverse G and reverse H. Let's have a look at Britannia's head. She's got quite a thick neck in reverse G and her mouth is closed. We come over to reverse H. The neck is much longer and thinner and Britannia's mouth is slightly open there. Different face altogether. But the easiest thing for me when I'm looking at these coins is the lighthouse. So let's go down there and look at the lighthouse. See the masonry, see the brickwork is easily to see, very easy to see. And there's kind of a, like a, a ball structure right on the top of the lighthouse. Uh, the lighthouse is quite thick as well. Let's go over to H, look at that, 
thin a lighthouse, you can't see the masonry or the brickwork very well, and there's no ball type structure on the top. So it's quite easy to spot, quite easy to tell the difference. So let's have a look at mine. And on my coin, Britannia's neck is long and thin, and her mouth is slightly open. And the lighthouse is quite thin, you can't see the masonry, and there's no ball structure on the top. So this must be a reverse H. Okay, let's go to eBay, type in 1874 penny. Now we need to go to sold items because we want to know what the uh, penny actually sold for and not what people are asking. That's a completely different thing. So let's click on sold items. Okay, one there straight away, £250, but I can see that's an H mint mark. So that's not one we've got. American penny there. £75 there, H mint mark again. Uh, what's this? I oh, know that's reverse G, so we've got an H. And there's one there, £59. That looks like an obverse 6, because we can see the whole brooch, can we? Yep, yeah, we can. So let's have a look at the reverse. Oh, uh, no, there's the lighthouse with the ball on top. And thick neck, so that's not it. I tried a few more on eBay, no luck. Come over to London Coins, because this is where you get some nice auction prices. It tells you the results. £420, that one. So we've got a Freeman 67, dies 6 and H. We've got 6 and H. So I think we need to go and have a quick look at Freeman's. Catalogue number 67, 6 and H. So yeah, that's definitely the right coin. But it is an uncirculated condition, isn't it? That's a problem. And mine isn't quite as good as that. But as I say, that sold for, what was it? 400, £420. So what could mine be worth? Oh yeah, I'll put a link below to London Coins if you want to go and have a look at their website. Mintage figures for 1874 pennies, probably going by estimate there. They go by the weight and work it out from there. The Heaton Mint, 6.7 million, but we haven't got that one. We've got the Royal Mint one, which is 5.6 million. But that would include all the different varieties. So what about the variety I found? We know it's a obverse 6 and a reverse H. So that's catalogue number 67, and Freeman say it's a rarity R12. If we look at Freeman's rarity index, R12, 1001 to 2000. Now that doesn't mean that's how many were minted, that's how many are estimated to be out there with a clear date and easy to recognise variety. My one, very clear date, easy to recognise variety, but this one for instance, Although we can just about see it's 1874, there's no way to tell clearly which variety that is. So that wouldn't count. That wouldn't be in the index. Okay, what can I get for this? I'm going to say this is in very fine condition. Probably not quite extremely fine. And I'm going to say between 60 to 80 pounds. If I photograph that and put some really close up pictures like this, you need good pictures if you're going to sell on eBay. I've seen people put pictures like this on eBay and then wonder why their coins don't sell. It doesn't matter what description you put, if you don't put good pictures with it, you're not going to sell it on eBay. So that's my prediction between 60 and 80 pounds for a five pound buy. That's not bad, is it? That's quite a good markup. Let me know in the comments if you think any differently. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. No end. See you in the next one.